Price per square foot can be a very useful tool, one of many, for pricing a property and figuring out where should it sell. But it has some caveats. It is only useful if the two properties or more that are being compared are truly similar. For example, uh, condos that are both one bedroom, one bath, 820 square feet in the same complex that have uh, both had the same amount of remodeling or lack thereof, those are really good comps. Now, one of them might overlook a freeway and the other might overlook a green belt. So you're gonna have to account for that. So even in very similar properties, there will still be differences and it's not exact. The, um, the accuracy will depend on many different uh, factors. So one is close location. So a condo complex, the same complex or a similar one, or if you're in a house, say a Saratoga house in a neighborhood like the Golden Triangle, largely built by George Day, those might be comparable homes, especially if they're on the same block with the same amount of traffic or the same quiet cul-de-sac or what have you. Um, it's really imperative, and I wanna stress this, that the square footage be within 10% plus or minus. Now you might have to stretch it out to 15, but even then you're gonna get kind of shaky results. And if you go out to 20 or 25 or something uh, much larger than that in terms of percentage, bigger or smaller, it will get all screwed up. And I see this happen all the time when people look at tiny homes, which by the way, sell for more per square foot, and then compare a tiny home of 1,100 square feet with an 1,800 square foot house, and then try to impute that tiny house square footage onto the 1,800 square foot house, it won't work. You'll be way sky high and it'll be just disastrously wrong. So the square footage needs to be close. The lot size needs to be close. So if you're having a, a 5,000 square foot lot, you don't want to compare it to an 8,000 or 9,000 square foot lot. Try to keep it within that 10%. But when you, when you get further afield, it gets more unreliable. Uh, similar age and condition. So if you have a home that's on a busy road like Blossom Hill Road, you don't want to use an absolutely uh, strict comparison with a home internal to that neighborhood that's on a quiet street because they are different. And that might be a 10 or even 20% difference in valuation because of that busy road. Um, being um, up against a freeway wall similarly is going to be a negative that will pull the price per square foot down or being up against high voltage power lines. Any kind of location issue, uh, backing to a school, anything that's perceived as a negative will screw up that price per square foot unless your comparable also has that same condition or uh, location condition whatever it might be um the other thing that gets really confused and is not obvious to the casual observer is that additions to the square footage can mess with the price per square foot original square footage usually has a proportionality to it and a flow to it that are more sensible than a lot of homes with additions. I have seen homes with additions where it feels natural, everything seems to have grown proportionally, um, but often that isn't the case. So for example, if you start with a um, 1150 square foot house that's three bedrooms and two bathrooms, and then you add two more bedrooms to it, you really need a larger kitchen to go with those extra mouths that you're feeding in those extra bedrooms. And so the kitchen, and the living room and the dining space, they all start looking dwarfed. So you kind of want to look at a proportion between bedroom space and living space that kind of need to grow together to make sense. Um, and when people do additions, sometimes you end up with kind of funky winchester -y kind of feelings like, well, some of the bedrooms are over here and some of the bedrooms over here and some of the bedrooms are over here and, you know, some are down in the basement. So you kind of have to watch for that. Usually, bedrooms are in two wings. Sometimes the primary is off by once by itself. More often the primary and maybe two or three other bedrooms are in one wing and maybe one extra bed and bath are in another wing. But when you start having multiple wings, uh, it may not appeal to all buyers and it may reflect in the uh, sales price. So you want to watch for things like that that make it very different. If you have a large lot and the house has no pool, in a neighborhood where everybody else has a pool, you might have to um, look at that and say, what would it cost to add a pool and factor it in that way? Because the price per square foot will not be as accurate. Um, buyers have expectations of homes in 
particular areas with very large lots that they will have X, Y, and Z amenities. And if you don't have them, it may be an issue. Anyway, price per square foot is super useful when the properties are super similar. And the more differences you start having, whether it's school district or whether it's home size or one story home versus two story garage, no garage, then it starts getting a little funky. So similar is great and close in time too, like in the last three to four to six months, go back a year if you have to, but sometimes that market was different. So the most similar will be the most accurate. And remember, price per square foot is only one data point. It's not your only data point. So you don't want to be overly reliant on just that one factor. Thanks. And if you have any questions or have any feedback, feel free to shoot me an email, mary at popehandy.com. Thank you. Bye.